Hey, Mr. Sams. Yes? Yeah, I've been thinking. I've been thinking, uh, maybe I should make another career change. Oh, yeah? No more music? No, I'm thinking no more music. Sorry, on the music there. Yeah, I, I, you know, I got the harmonic here. Okay. No. Yeah. It, it works, you know. Better than the other ones. But I was thinking, you know, maybe I should become, like, an inspirational speaker. Oh, a motivational speaker? Okay. Yeah. 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 Get yeah. hired out to go get people fired up to do something or other? Yeah, I, okay. I, you know, and I've heard that they, they always kind of come up with really good one-liners. Okay, yeah. Usually. Yeah, like like this one. Okay. I told my doctor I broke my leg in two places. You know what he told me? Huh. Quit going to those places. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's inspirational. Very professional. And then last night, you know, mm. I went in bed looking up at the stars uh -huh. in the sky, and I thought to myself, where the heck is my ceiling? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably something you should think about if you're lying in bed and you're seeing the stars. Yeah. Or, you know, this one. You know, the yeah. greatest thing in, or pleasure in life is doing what people say you cannot do. Now, that's definitely something you could probably hear from motivational speakers. Yeah. So, you, know, yeah. you know, maybe I should become a motivational speaker. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Mr. Bergman, the motivational speaker. Got my podium, right? Stand up in front of a podium. There you go. There's my audience. I guess I do have an audience, though. Or you could live in a van down by the river. Oh, I could be a van down by the river. What's yeah. that mean? You don't... That's another Saturday Night Live sketch. That's Chris Farley. Oh, Chris Farley. He was the motivational speaker, but he lived in a van down by the river. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Well, hey, we're going to do Chapter 6 today. Yep. And we're going to learn about thermochemistry. What does that mean, thermochemistry? Thermo looks like heat and chemistry. So we're going to be studying the heat, the chemistry of heat. All right? Yeah, probably, probably I'll stick to this because I know a lot about chemistry. I don't know a lot about motivational speaking. Mm. But, you know, I might give it a shot, you know. I'll come up with some more quotes. Yeah. All right. Hey, what do we know about uh, thermodynamics? Um, energy. It cannot be created, nor can it be destroyed. It cannot be created or destroyed. And that is called the, uh, the, uh, the law of conservation of energy. And also called the first law of, of thermodynamics. thermodynamics. Yep. There's another word, thermodynamics. We'll learn more about that in the year. Hey, and the sum total energy is, uh, in the universe is what? Um, I'm assuming you mean constant. Constant, yeah. yeah. It doesn't change. So it is a constant amount, and it does not change. And now this word thermodynamics, actually, let's break it apart. The word thermo, of course, we kind of talked about this already. Thermo means heat. heat. And what's the word dynamics mean? Uh, usually a change. Yeah, it, it talks really about movement. Yeah. The word dyna a dynamo is something that moves. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's dynamic is probably moving around as he speaks. The, you know, the, the motivational, motivational speaker. <laughs> So we have movement. So hey, it is a it, it, we're studying um, how heat moves. There it is. Can heat move? Mm-hmm. What do you mean it moves? How does it go? It has to go it? from one place to another, and it goes from an area of a higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. Yes, it does. So we're going from a high temperature to a lower temperature. Now, so yeah, there's uh, no such thing as cold. Yeah, things so don't get cold; they get unhot. Things always flow. This is important, folks. From hot to cold. So if you open up the door and your mom says, you're letting the cold in, you very politely tell your mother, um, sorry mom, I'm actually letting the heat out. But you'll probably uh, get grounded or yelled at or something. So I wouldn't recommend that. So if you're standing in the door and it's open, the heat will always flow out of the house, assuming the house is warmer than the outside. Usually is up here. And where we live at a cold out, uh, climate, that's usually the case. And so heat flows always from hot to cold, never the reverse. Yep. Okay. All righty. So we've said that. All right. So Ooh, delta H. Hold on. No, I think we forgot no. something. No. Okay. Yeah, there's two ways that heat can be involved. Oh, yes. It can flow in one of two ways in a chemical reaction. In a reaction. Endothermic. Endo means in. Thermo meaning heat. So the heat goes into the reaction. Now, we talk about this when we talk about systems and we talk about surroundings. So energy is flowing into the system from the surroundings. Okay, we're not making heat. We're not creating it anywhere. It's going from one place to another. So if I have a box right here, and this is sort of defined, it's going to be kind of weird, folks. This is called the system. Okay, the system in chemistry land is almost always a chemical reaction. Right. And so um, energy can either flow into your system, into your, we're going to kind of think of it as a box. All right, and that is considered endothermic. endothermic. You could... This would also be uh, like inside of a house mm -hmm. or your body, all right? An endothermic reaction, for example, would be um, as heat's being added to my body when I'm warming up um, after a cold day or something like that next to the fire. Okay. Okay. And then the opposite is true. If I have my box and then energy flows out of it, 
That's going to be exothermic. Exo meaning out, so it's going out of the system. So we're defining everything in relationship to the system. This is considered, the box is the system here, and out here in this never never land is the surroundings. So we have a system and we have a surroundings. You know, you could also think about this like with a human body. So um, inside of your body, as you're standing there, chemical reactions are taking place. Yes. So um, if you eat um, that Snickers bar or whatever it is, and then you eat that, those chemicals in the Snickers, the Snickers, Snickers, they're not. Snickers. They can't make you sick if you eat too many <laughs> of them. Um, the the chemicals in the Snickers bar, which is sugar, C6, H12O6. Ish. Ish, yeah. Those chemicals break down and they produce energy. They also produce carbon dioxide and water and such. But that energy then can goes in your body, and that's what keeps your body warm. Right, and that's why you radiate heat. That's why you have a temperature. Yes. So, and also, it use you can use that energy to move your muscles. Yeah. And to walk and talk and do the things that you yeah. do. Yeah. Okay. All hey, right. There is a second um, or definition we need to kind of talk about. There's this thing called enthalpy. Enthalpy is something that we call and we measure as delta H. Yes. So delta H, what is delta H? That is the change in our, of our heat in our system. So it's a change in the heat of the system. Now there's two ways that heat can be involved. We just said exothermic and endothermic. Mm -hmm. So if delta H, actually we indicate, there's actually no such thing as negative energy. Right. I've learned this in my motivational speaking. Thing. Negative energy? Negative yeah, energy. Yeah, we want to block the negative block energy. The yeah, negative. But yeah, you know, exactly. as a scientist, I can't use that term because no, there is no such is thing no. as negative energy. Now, when we put a negative sign with delta H, what we're referring to is the direction that it is flowing in relationship to the system. So if it has negative delta H, the energy is flowing out of the system. And as we learned, that is exothermic. If delta H is positive, the energy is flowing into the system. And we call that endothermic. So, yeah, exactly, Mr. Sams. So it's important on these things, and we're going to spend a whole other chapter later on in the year learning uh, more details about this. Yeah. But it's very important. The signs of delta H are very, very important. Positive energy flows in. Negative energy flows out. Yep, and you sometimes are just given a number, and you need to determine what the sign is going to be based on how the problem is phrased, and we'll talk more about that later. All right. Now, delta H is a number. Mm. We love quantifiable numbers, and there are actually four ways that you can calculate delta H. And so you're going to just sort of fill this out. Yeah. We're going to learn a couple of the ways in this particular podcast or in this uh, particular unit. The yep. first one we're going to say is called calorimetry. It's like colorimetry. It's but which cal. Calorie. Cal. It comes from the word um, calorie. And so measuring calories. And, you, of course, if you eat that Snickers bar, mm -hmm. it has a number of calories in it. We can okay. also use what we call Hess's Law uh, version 1. And then there's also Hess's Law. You just write these down, and then we'll talk about them as they come, version 2. And then the last way is using bond energies. And frankly, folks, we're going to learn how to do the first three in this unit. And the, and the bond energy one we can't really do no, we'll until we learn about, about bonding. Bonds. All right. So that takes us now to um, a, a definition. Specific heat is an interesting concept. Yeah. It is the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of a pure substance one degree. Just Celsius. as a vocabulary note, sometimes specific heat is also referred to as specific heat capacity. Yeah. So let's say I have um, one gram of water. So if I have one gram of water... The amount of energy, so if I then take and I put a flame underneath this, red probably is a good color for flames. Yes, very good. And as the flame nice goes flame. in there, yeah, there's my flame. Woo, flame. Okay, as that, that energy flows into my one gram of water, and it, let's say this is at uh, you know 19 degrees Celsius, and if I can raise it up to 20 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius then it will get the amount of specific heat. Right. The water. It it's the amount out. of energy it takes to raise it one, one gram of water, one degree Celsius. And the symbol for specific heat is a C. Yes. And so we Usually just, a lowercase c. That is a lowercase c. Yeah. 
I should add, yeah, well, that is a lowercase c. It's supposed to be. And the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18, and that's joules per gram degree Celsius. So it takes 4.18 joules to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Yes, and that's actually relatively high as far as specific heats are concerned. Water has this amazing ability to be able to absorb and release energy without changing temperature. And that's actually a very good thing for you because if it didn't and you went out into the sun, you would boil. your temperature would get really, really hot and you would boil. And that's bad. You would not want to boil. Mm, it would boil no. your bones, I mean your blood. Yes. And that would be very bad. That's bad. We don't want that. Yeah, and water has a very, very high specific heat compared to most things. That number four does not look very high, no. but it is very high. Compared to like point to One. something or yeah. whatever, yeah, or mm. for some metals. And so here's something that's kind of a weird oxymoron here. The lower the specific heat, the... Greater the temperature change when heated. Good example of that would be a metal. Yeah, if you take a metal, I mean, you're probably not in your car, Mr. Sam's, on a hot sunny day when you lived like in L.A. Oh, yeah. And then it was, you probably had, you have a black car, you, your friend uh, had a black car. Yeah. What yeah. happened there? It was it was pretty toasty. Yeah, so yeah my friend had a black Mustang, Ooh. and it was like 115 outside, and you you couldn't go near the thing because you'd about burn your hand off. Yes, so you've probably ever been in that place that that some things raise their temperature uh -huh. and you burn because the temperature's so high. Yeah, but the same amount of energy went to that as say the the lake that was right next to it, and mm -hmm. that didn't heat that didn't as change much. at all. No. All right, and the higher the specific heat, the the lower the temperature change when heated. The lower the temperature change. When yeah, that was the nice thing about in LA too. The closer you got to the to the coast, the more temperate the climate was. It didn't get nearly as hot or as cold because now, the water, water kept things nice and. I happen to have an analogy for you, Mr. Sam. Oh, please. Let's share with just us. say that you're at the side of. Can your you make seat. it a motivational analogy? I think so. Please. You know, well, you know, I, I do triathlons, and there's like these swimming we swim in a triathlon yeah. which is a motivational thing to do i'm motivated to swim fast okay and so let's say you are here and you are uh, well you, let's say your name is michael phelps ah he's a I've famous heard of him. guy michael phelps michael <laughs> what's in i just spelled his name wrong i bet okay but michael phelps <laughs> has decided to go swimming in this tiny little swimming pool he never would do that but let's just say he decides to walk onto the concrete it's an extremely hot summer hot, day hot, 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 and what happens hot, hot, when he hops burn. on the concrete ah, ah, my toes. He always complaining. Okay, I doubt he would complain, but we'll pretend he complains. Because you see, the concrete is made of, well, I mean, the, the deck is made of concrete. Yeah. And concrete has a... Low specific heat. So the temperature is very, very hot. Yes. So if he were then though, to dive into the water and swim his miles and miles in the water, what would happen? Um... Well, he's going to cool off because the water is not nearly as hot as concrete is. And why is the water not as hot? It's the same it, sun is hitting both the true. concrete and but the water. But with the higher specific heat, it's going to be able to absorb a lot more energy with a very small temperature change. Yes, so the temperature change is very small. Period there. Okay? So yep. that's the key thing there. Swim, okay. swim, swim, swim. So what do we measure delta H with? What are the units on delta H? Uh, we either usually measure it in joules or kilojoules. All right, so the delta H, the units are typically kilojoules, actually per, per mole. mole. So it's per mole of a substance. Yep. Sometimes it can be per gram of a substance. And then mm -hmm. you've got to watch the sign. The sign just yep. means the direction of the energy flow. Yeah, so watch the, the joules and the kilojoules things. Keep, yeah. on, keep an eye on those. OK. And uh, you know we have forgotten one other thing here. Hmm. Um, what did we forget? This is what we forgot. We forgot the equation. Oh, the equation, yes. Yeah, the equation that uh, solves for heat energy. And this is very important. Yes. Here's an equation you want to write down. Q, Q is equal to M times C times delta T. Yep. Where M is the mass of the substance. Could be 100 grams of water or 1,000 grams or a million grams of water. Or C is 50 the specific kilograms heat. of Michael Phelps. Yeah. I don't know. And delta T. Now, what's that little triangle? That delta, delta means means? a change. Change in the temperature. Temperature. So it's it's the how much the temperature changes. So you would subtract. So if the temperature uh, is five degrees and it goes to ten degrees, mm -hmm. delta T is uh, five. Five. Ten yeah. minus five. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Thinking of something else, Mr. Bergman. Why is it a Q? I thought we were talking about delta H. Yeah, because um, yeah, when we do calorimetry, we have to solve for Q because Q right. is like the energy. And Q gives us joules. Yeah. Joules okay. or kilojoules. It's not joules per mole yet. You're going to have to divide by something 
by something's moles to turn it into kilojoules per mole if you actually want an actual delta H value. So you're going to do some kind of a stoichiometric thing or right. just a dimensional analysis to find moles. So basically what you do is you're going to take the kilojoules and you're going to divide by the moles to get your answer. So um, this is almost like an equation to solve for delta H. If you know one number and the other, you simply divide. Now the sign does not come from